Welcome to the Roboticist Chronicles, an ARC Specialties podcast, where we get into the nuts and bolts of robots, automation, and the implications of an evolving machine workforce. Hello, this is Dan Alford with ARC Specialties. You're listening to the Roboticist Chronicles. We're up in Chicago at Fabtech. This is the American Welding Society's annual convention. And I'm up here with another Texas company. Max, tell us what you do for a living. Uh, Push Corp is uh, based out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, we are a manufacturer of spindles and compliance devices uh, for robotic automation, uh, specifically focusing on material removal. So the way the robot industry works, you got the robot manufacturers, you got integrators like Arc Specialties, and we got you tooling guys. And we lean heavily on uh, on your company because we need the spindles, we need the tools. We've done a bunch of jobs together in the past, and, uh, and we've got a couple going on right now. So it, it's been a great relationship. Yeah, that's right. That relationship's gone a long time, and I think it's it's really important the fact that Push Corp doesn't do any integration. We got to rely you on you much. guys. <laughs> yeah, we got to rely on you guys to get equipment out there. But what you're doing right is you got a laboratory up in Dallas, don't you? That's right. Yeah, and so right. we're, we're the same way in Houston. We believe that if you're going to sell a job, it's best to do the test. And frequently, when we're doing tests, we figure out that we didn't know everything. Right. And we change the approach, we change the tool, something like that. That's what's going on right now with you and I. We're doing something where we're trimming elastomers, right? That's right. Yeah, so in Dallas, we've got one of every tool we make, right? So if we start going down a path that doesn't work, we can easily pull an audible, pull another piece of equipment in, different bigger spindle, smaller spindle, maybe a higher speed spindle, add compliance, uh, active, passive, whatever needs to happen there, or we can even go to a belt sander. So being able to do these things in the labs allows us to do a lot of work in a short amount of time, which gets you moving faster to getting that PO and integrating the equipment. Well, and, and elastomers, you'd think they'd be easier because they're soft, but <laughs> yeah. that, that is not opposite the case. Truth. Yeah, opposite of the truth. I'd, ra I'd rather get a hard metal, I think. Yeah, yeah I'd rather the grind welds all day long. Yeah, which is something we've done also. And then, let's see, the last one we just did was fiberglass. That's right, routing, routing fiberglass. So we had a, we had a robot, two stations, rotary tables, your tooling, but the, the hard part on this one was they wanted to do all sorts of different shapes and sizes, so it was your tool changer. That's right. It really made it work. That's right, yeah. If you need to go from a half inch cutter to a three quarter inch cutter, having that tool changer be able to swap on the fly, that's that's critical for the success of a project like that. So we're sort of encroaching on machine tools uh, territory now. A little bit. Yeah, we got, yeah, so we're machining and changing tools. <clears throat> let's see, well, we've been, uh, did another one back, uh, let's see, you got a, a, a weld grinder, right? Yep, yeah, we have the weld shaver. Uh, we're able to remove high volumes of welds, uh, either robotically um, or like on a uh, fixed uh, fixed boom welder uh, as well. So if somebody's doing like a submerge arc weld, we can flip that uh, submerge arc out of the way and come back with the weld shaver, remove large and volumes of And you're not using weld. fiber, uh, you're not using sandpaper at that point. We're not, that's it's a cutter. Car carbide that's a cutter. cutters. That's correct. That's correct. One of our big successes was up in Canada. You know, they do the oil sands, and uh, they're making these uh, parts, and it was all turned on the lathe. With one exception, they wanted to cut one small slot about that long, and they had to hold plus or minus 3,000s tolerance on it, and so the plan was they would take it out of the lathe, move it over to a mill, make one slot, shut it down, and uh, our cooperation now, the robot sits there waiting, and as soon as the lathe stops, it cuts that groove. Yeah, that's right. So, so think about all the material handling time that they're saving, oh, yeah. it's huge. and the chance of damaging that part while you're moving it, reinstalling <laughs> it, bringing it back. Now that robot's able to do that process with the tolerance that they need. Mm -hmm. I mean, can't get any better. And it was simple. Robots underutilized, but it was still a great project. Yeah, yeah, it's still better than somebody trying to do it by hand. And so. One of the other things you're doing you haven't mentioned yet is compliance. Because when you're starting to do finishing, you know, when you're machining, you want your tool to go to a specific point. But if you're going to do some kind of a finishing, right. you have to have compliance because the parts aren't right, the abrasive wears. What's your approach? Yeah, absolutely. So the compliance, the compliance allows the robot to apply a constant force onto the part. So if you think about it, the way we traditionally program a robot, you move it a millimeter here, a millimeter there put a millimeter into a part, depending on what's on the business end that's contacting the part, 
a millimeter in could be two pounds of force, it could be 30 pounds of force. You really don't know. Could be a crash. Right? Yeah, it could be a crash, right? So the compliance device, having that compliance stroke in there because the carriage moves, hence the compliance portion. <laughs> but then we also have a suite of sensors inside in our active unit that allows you to apply consistent force. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give you better material life, um, better wear on the abrasive, uh, make robot programming simpler, actually, because you don't have to be exact right. on that. Um, but it's going to give you a level of control that emulates what a person would do by right. hand. Exactly. When you're sanding or polishing, it's a constant force that you're that's applying right. to the part. That's right. And that's what I tell everybody. It's, it's really easy to teach the science. It's very hard to teach the art, right? right. So mm -hmm. our, de our device helps make that art a little bit simpler because we can fine tune that process that would take forever to try to do on a robot. Mm -hmm. Well, we're up here in Chicago, and uh, I just wanted to highlight the stuff you're doing because it's the relationship between you two builders, us robot integrators, and the end users that makes this whole thing work. That's right, yeah, we, we couldn't do it without you guys. We, no, need, no. we need strong integrators, and uh, our specialty is one of the strongest, so we, we value this relationship a lot. What else do you want to talk about today? Uh, I cover it all. Yeah, so like I said, we're, we're based out of Dallas, Texas. We got the labs. If anybody's got anything that they want to come up or run, run through us or work together, be happy to process that, that through. Well, thanks for coming on the show, and thanks for all your help. All right, appreciate it, Dan. Get you back soon. Yeah.